I'm actually not sure why this is not more widespread. It's a really simple way to do it. No matter if it's a backend file, frontend file, style file, you name it, this is going to work every single time. It has been scientifically proven that cursor rules increase the well-being of the Vibe Coder by at least 27%. But how? How do we get these cursor rules? People are asking me, Dan, are you gonna pull out the cursor rules out of your hat? Well, there's no cursor rules in my hat but I will show you every single thing I know so you don't ever have to worry about cursor rules ever again. So let's jump right into it. So if you didn't know, cursor rules live in the dot cursor slash rules directory. You can make subdirectories in here and you can create as many cursor rules as you want. They are in the MDC file format, which is basically marked down with some extra steps. Don't worry about it. If you know markdown, you're gonna be perfectly fine. So you create a new file, haskell.mdc, obviously the world's most popular AI coding language, and then you just fire away. Here we go. Hello? Hey Dan, have you checked outside? Uh, no, sorry, what's outside? Outside the window, it's year 2025 Dan. Holy f it's what? All right guys, that was obviously a joke. You're not supposed to write cursor rules like this. We're not gonna write them by hand. It's 2025, we need to write code, we need to ship apps. So let's seize the opportunity while we can. Let's build something cool. And I'm gonna show you how to do this right without spending a bunch of time writing things from scratch. But before that, you will need a couple foundational rules, okay? These foundational rules are not necessarily specific to your project. You can just get them from somewhere. You can get them from me. I'll link them into the description. And after we put these foundational rules in place, they're gonna show you how to make specific rules for your language, for your project, for your coding style, and so on and so forth. It's gonna be really easy. So please check it out. Deleting this monster. Delete, delete. The first rule you need to add is the rule for cursor rules themselves. Trust me, having this in place will just make everything else easier. So cursor rules.mdc is going to tell cursor how to structure rules, where to put them, and what file name they should have. Pretty simple stuff. At the top here, if you haven't worked with cursor, you can give it a rule type, which is telling cursor how this rule should apply. You can do either always auto attach, agent requested, or manual. This one should be agent requested, and the description for it should be how to add or edit cursor rules in your project. So just briefly, it does naming convention directory structure and then a basic example on how this file should look. All right, this is one of the foundational rules. The other one is also not something I invented. It's a rule that I stole from Taskmaster AI and this is the self-improve rule. So the self-improve rule actually teaches cursor how to create more rules by itself. And yes, my friends, we have reached level two of inception and that Oscar Leonardo DiCaprio is mine now. So what does this do? It tells cursor to look at patterns look at bugs and create new rules when a certain number of these bugs or patterns appear. Pretty simple, it explains how to recognize these patterns and how to continuously improve as you prompt it. And these two rules just include in every project, don't worry about them, they're gonna do their thing, you don't have to change them, you don't have to maintain them. By the way, if you look at the bottom of this file, you see that I can actually reference a rule from another rule. You can reference any file in the source code if you want to. And this one essentially ensures that the format of the cursor rule that's going to be created is going to respect the format that we want. So now what? The first thing you need to do is document the file and directory structure in your project. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but never start from empty project. When you're coding with AI, always bootstrap, use the CLI, use Shipix and use whatever is easier for you. Don't let AI start from scratch because it's not gonna do a good job. It's gonna mangle your dependencies. You're gonna spend a lot of tokens. You're gonna spend a lot of time and have a worse foundation than just using a CLI as we used to before my beer was turning white. So here's how we do this. We do add cursor rules. So we attach the format of the rule that we've just defined. And then we type list all source files and folders in the project and create a new cursor rule outlining the directory structure and important files and folders. Once we do this, it's going to list a bunch of files and it's going to create a cursor rule containing the directory structure. So after it does this, you wanna double check it and make sure it didn't do too much 
and also that it captured the places where you have shared components or places that are not that obvious to the AI that it couldn't really determine from listing. All right, so here it is. You can see it did a pretty thorough job. It may be listed a bit too much, so stuff like Git or GitHub I'll probably remove. But the other stuff, top level files, where the components are placed, what type of components they are, you can see it identified. These are ShadCN components and slash UI. And then it figured out Chipixon has an MDX blog and the content is placed on their data. It figured out authors config and a lot of other stuff. And it also figured out where public files go, images, and so on. This is going to be super neat because it's going to eliminate some of the silly mistakes that the AI does while coding. All right, the next thing you want to do is add cursor rule and then add package.json and prompt the following. Analyze all major dependencies and create a cursor rule outlining the stack of the application and the versions I'm using and any remarks on best practices on those versions. This is going to help you when the AI is going to use an outdated pattern of a certain framework or a certain function that's deprecated or switch to new ways of doing things that have been introduced in the latest versions of the said framework. Cool, so this is what it did. It figured out I'm using a certain version of React. It told it it should use functional React with hooks and avoid legacy patterns classes. This is pretty much spot on. TypeScript, Tailwind, and it even detected my schema validation, UI and design system, all of the good stuff. This is gonna come really handy as we add components. So now you know what they say, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man to generate cursor rules and you feed him for a lifetime. So I'm gonna teach you exactly how to write these rules regardless of your code base. And it's really simple guys. I'm actually not sure why this is not more widespread. Maybe this is a feature that I came across that many people haven't. So I hope you spread the word about this because it's really flexible and scales to every single code base. So just as an example, I would like to create a cursor rule for a React component under Shipixon. So Shipixon has all of these landing page components. Let's pretend I want to create one more landing page component in Shipixon and I want it to be in the exact same style of code. You can see that this component has a certain pattern when passing props and it is pretty flexible. It accepts either strings, React components or children as its props. And I would like to create more components like this. So how do we do it? We head over to the chat. So I add cursor rules and then add landing newsletter section and then do slash generate cursor rules. And I prompt it. I want to generate a cursor rule for the attached file. Please analyze it carefully and outline all of the conventions found, output as one rule file only. So now I bet you can see where this is going. You can essentially do this with any single file, no matter if it's a backend file, frontend file, CSS file, you name it. This is pretty much going to work the same way and it's going to output relevant rules. So let's see what it did. So for example, it found the component structure, as I mentioned before, it figured out that there is a flexible content and then it, you can pass either string or components. It figured out event handlers and a lot more. And it included notes on styling, accessibility, and even some best practice that it could identify, which are actually pretty good. So no unused variables, no any types, no unnecessary comments. These are all things that AI frequently gets wrong, but not for you because you've generated your rule with this approach. So I'm going to do this with one more file just to show that it works generically. I picked a util called base64 to blob. I'm going to add cursor rules again, add base64 to blob, then slash generate cursor rules, then prompt it out the generate cursor rule and all of that sweet stuff. So this is a utility function convention and you can see it found patterns on type safety, implementation, error handling, documentation, and it even wrote general guidelines that are spot on for this use case. So keep utility functions pure and side effect free, prefer functional declarative code, use descriptive action oriented function names and keep the implementation concise and focused on a single responsibility. These are all very good things that your code should respect. And friends, that's it for now. This is short and sweet. I hope this helps you generate a lot of beautiful cursor rules. If you like this type of video, please consider to like, comment, and subscribe. Do you have other tips for us? Please put them down in the comments. And for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.